Uh, well, I don't know that we have a huge agenda, so should we just get? Okay, Harvey is our controlling one. All right, let's see. So we got on the agenda bots, yay. Um, I'm actually really liking this whole stale bot thing so far. It's cool. Oh, is there an agenda? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's on the, the, the invite list, but it's actually bots? stale bot and uh, DPP, I believe. Bots. All right. Um, so I don't know. Should we just start, start with bots? Oh. Christopher, you want to give us a little update there? Yeah, I didn't have much to say that I didn't uh, throw in there for just to save time. Uh, so yeah, glad to hear the spellbot's working and thanks for merging that PR. So now everything should correctly get marked as stale instead of a, uh, you know, old fix. Yeah, I, I actually went in and I untagged all the ones that it had tagged as won't fix and I marked them stale. But in actually marking them stale, that, that counts as an event for not being stale. So it'll it'll take another 30 days, but that's fine. Uh, okay. Um, the other bot that we wanted to do didn't seem like it had a clear hosted one or if it was a hosted one, it was, it, it didn't include all the things that we needed. Uh, so I have a work in progress up for that Envoy bot um, repository, which will allow you to do like a forward slash assign and then give a couple of GitHub names and it'll also verify for their <coughs> members and comment if they are not um, back to the issue. Uh, the weird bug that I found is that I'm running into some weird JavaScript like async await problems whenever the GitHub user just does not exist at all and it keeps commenting back and just throwing it into a loop. So that's kind of the last bug I need to fix before I'm ready for the PR to be fully reviewed. Cool, sounds great. And, uh, if, you're, if, you're, if you're super ambitious, there's a lot of changes that I would love to have on the DCO bot. <laughs> that, 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 would, that would be awesome. <laughs> yeah, I, I did look into that part of the issue and I, I kind of agree with Alista's comments that it seems like one of those like specific legal lease things that makes it well you know, there's like an just edge like, case to modify it unless they are explicitly opting into well sorry so i didn't i didn't actually even mean to do the the auto dco i just meant to fix the bot, the bot so that it like actually has error messages there's a bunch of cases where it just hangs and doesn't print any messages and you know, there's some basic stuff that we could do there where um, instead of just saying, you know, you failed, it could actually link you to a web page, which actually explain what to do. Um, so I, I, I think that there's just some basic usability things there that if we did would be pretty awesome. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. Should we open up any bot related issues on the Envoy bots repository? Sorry, what's that? Should we open issues for the Envoy bot? We can do that, though, though I suspect that we could just submit PRs directly to ProBot DCO, um, okay. and they would probably review them. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. All right, yeah, I will look into that as soon as I fix Envoy Bot. Thank you. That would be really awesome. Were we, is it um, straightforward to have a button to just re-execute CI in cases where it failed due to not being able to download some dependency from the network? It should be straightforward. Um, it, it probably just depends on, um, we, we might have to invoke some circle CI API call, uh, but I, I, I think it should probably be pretty easy. But yes, uh, that would definitely be awesome. And I'm not sure, like at one point somebody maybe suggested that to kick that off, I could close and open the PR, but I don't, it seems like it optimizes around that somehow. Yeah, it does. I think, I think that doesn't work because it just figures out that it's already built um, that particular SHA. The thing that will always work is you can push an empty commit and that will always kick it. The downside of that is that that will rerun all tests, uh, which can take a long time. So, uh, I, I mean, like most systems, like, 
internally, we have bots that do all kinds of things. And one of them is just to re-kick tests that, that, that failed. Um, so like, I, I don't think that would be hard to implement. It's just someone would have to look at the Circle API and probably figure out which API to call. But what, what we should do is just go into the open bots issue and just write down any and all ideas. Uh, and then hopefully we can find someone to eventually work on it. If you just search issues for bots, there's a, there's a bots tracking issue. Cool. Very nice that we're making some progress on this. All right, anything else on the bots? No. All right, network service extension update. Dave. So uh, so I'll start with uh, an announcement that I've, uh, I'm in the process of moving to a new opportunity. So uh, my last day at Cisco is next Tuesday. And so I'm in the process of doing a bunch of TLI work. And so the work that I've done so far, I'm handing off to Ed Warnicky and whoever else is gonna get recruited to work with him. Um, so that's kind of why things stalled out last week and I didn't uh, get the, the stuff pushed up that I was going to. Um, in any case, uh, there was, I did see a mention someplace of somebody wanting to uh, remove all of the, the, the native socket calls and use the, the OS sys singleton um, to do that. And so I was actually thinking that was a great idea as a place to start because uh, I, I was heading in that direction anyways. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, I don't, I don't think anything has changed. It's like someone just needs to go in and just make all the changes basically. Yeah, go do clean up stuff, so. Yeah. Cool. Well, good luck at your next gig. Thanks, man. All right. Um, small announcement from me. Um, I, I am gonna be working on a non-envoy related fire drill at, at, at Lyft probably for the next four to six weeks. Um, so I'll, I'll still be around to do code reviews and stuff, but you can expect me probably to be a little less engaged than normal. That happens. What's that? Yeah, well, Harvey and I are also in the same <laughs> Uh, the, the upside, I can't talk about it right now, but it's actually a pretty entertaining fire drill. So I, I, I did actually volunteer for this, but, uh, yes, there's, there's that at least. <laughs> um, all right. Anyone else have anything that anyone wants to chat about? Um, I, I'll just mention that we are looking at um, uh, downstream uh, circuit breaking. Awesome. We care about a lot and are gonna hopefully solve an envoy. Yeah, I, I mean, I think everyone cares about it. No one's just implemented it yet. So it would be really fantastic to get that implemented. I, I talked about it with Alyssa offline. Um, I. I think it's pretty straightforward, um, but if there's any questions and, and we just want to agree on the overall design, I would just have whoever's working on it just update that GitHub issue. Yeah. Yeah, we will. Um, Alyssa added also timeouts, which I still have a comment on that. What, what's the... Yeah, that one, um, that one is... That would also be great to do. That one is trivial. So that would be a good like starter issue. Um, so if there's someone that kind of wants, wants a little ramp up issue, that would be great. Yeah, no, we, we I believe need to do that in the order of the next couple of weeks. So we'll give it to whoever can do it soon. Okay, awesome. Yeah, and, and that will include the data frame timeouts also, right? So we've got two open issues tracking, one for like the you're making forward progress timeouts and the other for the um, timing out on the request path. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of them were okay. 
So we'll probably do one of them quickly and then leave the other one for, for a new Okay, game. that's fine. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think probably then the best thing for you to do is just to do what we talked about, which is deprecate the timeout in, in the buffer filter and move it into connection manager. Um, but we, we will end up implementing at Lyft probably in the next like order of weeks or one or two months, the data frame <laughs> timeouts, just because we're starting to deploy streaming APIs and we, and we basically have to have them. Um, so they'll, they'll get implemented one way or the other. Got it, cool. Nice, great. Marty, uh, I guess since we have some time, just to quickly chat out. How do we feel the um, the load balancing of PRs is going? Like, would the bots be able to sort of do a? Would that play a role? That would be really nice. Um, I, I mean, I don't think it would be hard to implement. I still feel like it's ad hoc in terms of how much work each individual maintainer is doing. Um, like, it hasn't been a huge deal just because I feel like the the work is getting done. Um, but it would be nice, I totally agree, to maybe automate the actual load balancing. So like one thing that we could look into, um, and this is something that maybe Christopher could actually implement once we have something that's hosted, is um, yeah, like if we had just some basic data store, like whether it be Dynamo or something else, we could just keep track of like the maintainer rotation and then literally just round robin one senior maintainer and one non-senior maintainer for every PR that, that gets opened. Yeah, and I mean, they, the initial assignments might not always make sense. And we yep. always exchange them and- Yep, yeah. That would be great. I think that sounds fantastic. Um, does that sound like something, Christopher, that you might be interested in implementing? Yeah, I did notice uh, someone implemented something like that. I could try to implement that node module I just definitely want it and see what it works. With code owners as well, so that again for things that are extensions and actually have code owners, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that that would be really nice too, because then if we did our own assignments, like I think um, I think the GitHub code owners doesn't support auto assignment if you're not a maintainer or something like that, but this would allow us to automatically assign things to, to code owners that aren't maintainers for extension. And also we could put in hints for the bot of uh -huh. like things that we are more familiar with. And yes, exactly. The code base that we actually know, which yep. Know. Yeah, that makes, that makes tons of sense. So even for existing maintainers, if we know that we want particular people to review certain you know, sections of the code, we can definitely add people for that. So yeah, I'm a, I'm a huge plus one on that. That would be super awesome. You brought up uh, hosting. Um, maybe Chris and Ashek could comment on where is, does CNCF have a place that we could host this yep. uh, like node bot? Yeah, yeah, we have server servers at Packet or Cloud Credits, whatever, whatever works, whatever it feels easiest for you. Yeah, okay. I, I, I think last time we talked about this, we just decided to like pick a cloud provider. And I suspect for our needs, you know, probably a free account would most likely be fine. Um, but but we can set up an account and then just have CNCF pay for it. Sounds good. Yeah, so is, probably is that documented in, in like the CNCF doc somewhere. Like how uh, you you would just file a we, we would just have the project do a service uh, service desk um, inquiry, and then we would approve it. Yeah, so probably what, what would be easiest is just to open a new cloud account, whether it be, uh, like we, we can pick, it doesn't matter to me, whether it be Amazon or Google or something else. And then, um, you know, make like an Envoy account with Envoy credentials. And then we can get you access to the, um, to the Envoy LastPass for the credentials. And then we can give Chris and CNCF access to the account and then they could just take over billing. Okay, yeah, that sounds good. I'll, I'll try it out locally, make sure that all works and then I'll file the service desk issue. Great, awesome, that's super exciting. Yeah, one, once we can, uh, you know, the only thing that I think is important is, uh, and like we had talked about this a while ago is whatever we do, we should just try to make it as seamless as possible. So for example, we should be able to make it so that we have a project, like we can hook up Circle CI to like run some basic test and then auto deploy. And then we can host it in like a Lambda or something like that. 
And that would mean that it's pretty much just people can just make changes and they'll just automatically get, get deployed. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll wire that through too. Awesome. And I, I think people's preference is to use Python um, unless there's a good reason not to. So let's, let's try to do that. Yeah. On that note. So Probot is written in, well, it was written in Node, and I think they just refactored it to use TypeScript. <laughs> okay. So everything that I have at the moment is, is in Node, but I don't know if there's extensibility where you can script it to call on other languages. That's fine. I mean, like, if there's, if there's existing code that we're using, I, I think it's fine. Um, but, like, if there's fresh code that's written, I, I think the preference is to use Python. Okay. Yeah, I... Personally, I prefer to try to use the Python too. So I'll look into that as well. Awesome. Okay, great. This is great. Cool. Anyone have anything else? All right. Take it easy, everyone. Bye.